Hi everyone, in today's stream processing tutorial we'll be going through an event detection scenario based on the location of incoming features. With FME, we can maximize the efficiency of our stream workflows and take them to the next level with spatial processing and saving time and storage costs. Our workflow will read from a fleet tracking Kafka message queue that's monitoring the locations of a municipality's vehicles. After creating point features for each location update, we'll use time windowing and a few other transformers to check if a vehicle is outside the city bounds and for how long. If a vehicle is outside for 10 minutes or longer, we'll want to send a notification. This is an extended application of geofencing with real-time data. So let's head over to the demo now. So here we are in our workspace. First, we are reading in the administrative boundaries of the municipalities around the greater Vancouver area and then we are just extracting the Vancouver boundary and we're using the tester to achieve this. We also have our Kafka connector that is connected to our message queue and currently I'm in batch mode for testing but when I swap it to stream it will run continuously uh, when I deploy it to FME server or FME cloud. We have the JSON flattener here that is extracting the attributes for the vehicles which includes uh, the vehicle ID, the type, and the location in the geo attribute. Then we're using a tester just to increase the efficiency of our workflow and only passing through the vehicles that are of the correct type that we're trying to monitor. And then we also have a set of transformers here that create point geometries for all of those vehicle updates. And we have a reprojector here to set it to the same coordinate system as our admin boundary data set. That way we can perform spatial analysis with our spatial filter. So in the spatial filter, we have set the spatial predicate to filter contains the candidate and uh, what this is doing is that it's checking if the Vancouver municipality boundary contains those truck locations and then we're tagging them on the past and failed routes uh, according to whether they are contained or not. Since order matters in this particular workflow, we need to ensure that the boundary is always received at the spatial filter first before the points do or else the points won't have anything to be compared against and the way to ensure this is to set the filters to first. As stated we're using the attribute creators to tag our incoming features whether they are inside or outside the Vancouver uh, boundary. We're using the same attribute outside Vancouver and we're saying yes or no depending on whether it passed or failed in the spatial filter test. In the second part of our workspace, we're doing timestamp comparisons for each vehicle to see how long they were actually outside of Vancouver. It starts with two time windows, and they are running at 30 minute time windows. And in these 30 minute windows, we're checking if a vehicle has been outside the bounds for 10 minutes or longer. And we're doing these checks every single time a new 30 minute window refreshes. And we can compare these timestamps by doing a feature join, by joining the vehicles while they were outside against themselves while they were inside. Um, and we're matching them based on the vehicle ID. And what this allows us to do is we can store that old attribute with the old timestamp while it was outside, and then compare it with the timestamp while it was inside, and then do some date time calculations to see how long those intervals are. When we're performing that join and all the features are going through, then we only need to see the most recent location in that window for each vehicle. So as the features are being joined, they're not actually ordered. So what the sorter does is that we are sorting based on each vehicle ID, as you can see here uh, for vehicle 274628. We have now sorted all the timestamps for all its location updates during this uh, time window. And when we go all the way to the bottom of this section, this will have the most up-to-date and the most recent location, which was at a 9528. And then we're using the sampler to just get that last feature out. So we don't need to actually um, check all the other features because we only need to see one. And then we're using the sampler to extract that single feature um, that was the most recent location uh, as you can see here, we're grouping it by vehicle ID and then just getting that last most recent feature. And the reason why we're doing this is because we only need that single feature for a vehicle. We don't need multiple features to represent a single vehicle. 
So here you can see that's 27 um, unique vehicles have been passed through the sampler for this window that have reported the locations. We're passing the old time stamp and the current or the inside time stamp and the outside time stamp. We're performing an interval date time calculation. As you can see here, calculate interval between uh, the start and the end time. And then we're using our tester just to filter to check if it has been outside for 600 seconds or longer. And 600 seconds is of course 10 minutes. And once that did pass, you can see that they have been outside for some of them as long as two minutes and up to getting close to three minutes. And once these ones have been detected for that time window, we clean up the attributes and send an email notification to ourselves. And then we move on to the second tester. Um, while I was running this workspace and building it, I had set the windows to five minutes and then checking if a vehicle had been outside for one minute or longer. But now that it's running with 30 minute windows, I'm just checking if it's been outside for 600 seconds or longer. And 600 seconds is of course 10 minutes. And once those features pass through, um, if any of those events are detected, we clean up the attributes and send an email notification to ourselves. And once you have this completed, you can deploy it up to your FME server or FME cloud to run continuously. Uh, for more guides and tutorials on FME server and streams, be sure to check out the community for more articles and our channel for other tutorial videos.